Walking alone in the middle of the night We shine brighter than a diamond We were strangers at the start Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be going over how to do some uh, use some machine learning algorithms to aid us in predicting stock prices. Um, this is something that I'm relatively new to and something that I would really like to apply to um, my investor bot. Um, I think it could be partic particularly useful for crypto um, because I've had a little bit more success predicting prices using this uh, with crypto than I have with stocks. But today we're going to go over uh, kind of how this works a little bit. So most of this code I actually got from uh, the first video I watched on uh, machine learning in Python and how to do it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and link that one below because it was a pretty helpful video. Um, I decided to make this one though because I found that he didn't really explain why some of the things were being done super well. Um, and I'm going to try to kind of dumb that down a little bit because I know I found some of that stuff really hard to uh, understand. Um, especially having not used a lot of um, Pandas data frames in the past. Uh, this can be a little confusing to get into. So I'm going to try to kind of explain it at a very basic level, um, kind of some entry-level machine learning stuff here. And then we'll definitely make some more stuff in the future. As you can see here, I have a bunch of stuff across the top that I've been uh, writing and working on using this uh, machine learning, um, which it's actually very cool. Um, and it's pretty low barrier for entry, I would say. Like, for example, I, I still don't understand completely how this... Uh, math all works in the background it's really really complex math some really smart people figured all that out um, and we can just pull their libraries and use them which is why it's so easy to get into um, some things you're going to need uh, most of the stuff we've had before you need numpy pandas data reader pandas uh, pip install these separately they're different uh, sk learn and keras um, so this keras is what's actually giving us access to uh, some machine learning stuff to do um, so for today, we're going to be predicting the price of, uh, SPY, which, um, at, at the time of recording is down significantly. Um, and it, it'd be good if I can get this working well to see when a reversal might be coming. Um, so we're using this data reader here, creating an instance of that and pulling the price from, uh, 2019 to today when I'm recording this, um, and then what we're doing with that data, it's coming in as uh, open, close, the date, time itself, all this stuff. So we're just filtering it. We're only going to use the close prices to feed into the uh, the algorithm. Um, so we're just setting the data set here equal to our filtered data, which is just the close column. And then our, we need to save this off for later uh, as the length of that data set. So something here that I didn't initially understand, I did some more research and I understand it a little bit better now. So we're scaling this data with this uh, min max scalar function here. And the reason we do that is because um, over data sets with a large variation. So let's say like in 2019, I don't know what the price was exactly, but it, it was significantly lower than it is um, today. Maybe not actually significantly lower than at least it was like a couple months ago when it was up pretty high. Um, and if you don't scale this data, you can kind of get some washout, especially in data sets with like larger variation. So that's the reason why we scale it between zero and one. So it's just going to take all the uh, values and normalize them between zero and one. Uh, and that prevents stuff from getting washed out when we run it through the, uh, the machine learning. Um, so we're just doing setting this and then we're scaling our data set here. Um, so next we're going to set our training data. Um, I'm actually I have I don't have any testing data set up for this one. I'm kind of just doing the training and then running it to predict the price for the next day. Um, so we have our training data and we're getting this length right here and we're doing it from zero to the length of that data, setting these lists empty, and then we're doing this in uh, groups of sixty. So it's going to look at sixty previous data points and try to predict the next one. And while it's doing the training, it's going to see how close it is if it's correct or not, and that's how it's going to learn. Um, how to predict that following day price. Um, so here we're doing some appending to these lists. So what this is doing is we're adding the 60 previous values to our X training. Um, and the zero is just the, uh, the zero with column, which is close. And then this Y training, we're appending the very next, so just the next one. So it's going to be um, 60, and then the 61st. 
is essentially how that's going to work. Um, and it'll keep doing that the whole way through our set, which I think is, uh, we're doing the close play for every day. So it's a pretty big, uh, data set to work with. Um, and then we're convert converting these both to uh, NumPy arrays, which is something that we need to do uh, to pass it in there. And then we are reshaping our X training because when you pass into the sequential machine learning um, algorithm here, you're going. It needs to be in three dimensions. So we have the. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what they are, but we, we essentially we have the. Uh, it's like the length, the width, and then how many uh, attributes each thing has. And since we're just doing closed price, this we, this one we can just set to one. These ones we're setting to the shape of our X train at zero and one. If we do a print X train X train shape uh, dot shape, it'll show us like the dimensions, which for us is going to be like one by six hundred, seven hundred something, because uh, we have one column and it has however many values in it are between these dates. Um, so once we get that all set, we're ready to set up our model and then train that model. So um, setting up this model. So LSTM is being pretty commonly used now. What it stands for is long short-term memory. And uh, what that means is that um, it has the ability to kind of keep some things in memory for a little while compared to most algorithms, input, processes, output. And that's what this is kind of doing. It's taking that, uh, initially we're look, looking at those 60, predicting the next one, and then um, in a typical algorithm, we just kind of throw that, throw that out, forget about that, and move on to the next one, but we need it to learn. So it's going to keep some of that in memory and kind of remember how previous predictions went, um, which is really helpful and something that's pretty crazy to think about. There's a lot of math behind the scenes that goes back um, all the way back to like the mid nineties of when people were thinking about how this could possibly work and, uh, reading up on, it's pretty interesting if you're a nerd like me. Um, but that said, it uses all kinds of crazy stuff, back propagation, stuff like that. So we have two layers of that is what we're doing here. We're adding layers model dot add. Um, and then this initial one, we're setting return sequences to true. So it's going to, uh, return to itself. And that's, that's kind of like that memory thing I'm talking about. And then the input shape, we're just setting it to our X train shape uh, of one. And then this one is because we have one uh, attribute that we're looking at, which is just the closing price. So our second uh, LSTM here, we have 100 nodes. Again, that's what this first number is, how many nodes you have. And then our return sequences this time is false because next we're going to go into a dense layer. Um, so what dense layers are typically used for is kind of narrowing down our data. But what a dense layer really means is... Um, each node, so all these 25 nodes get uh, output from every node of the previous layer. Um, and then it's going to do some matrix vector multiplication, which I am not super versed in. I just know that's what it does. Um, and then pass that on to our next dense layer. We get smaller. And then eventually we end up with our output, which is that price that it's predicting for the next day, the 61st day, based off those 60 previous days. Um, and then we're going to compile this model right here. Uh, there's a bunch of different optimizers that you can use, which will determine kind of how it's training. Um, I've seen some, I've seen Adam and Adigrad are kind of the ones that I've looked at a little bit, but there's a bunch of them out there. You can check them out for yourself and kind of read into it a little bit, a lot of math behind it. Um, but just something kind of personal preference you can look into and see what you think about that. And then this fit, um, the word fit here is pretty much equivalent to train. So this is where we're actually training the model um, to do these predictions. And it's going to go through that whole uh, data set we put in and try to do those predictions. And this, so batch size, uh, it's going to do five at a time. And epochs, I'm set to, I have it set to 10. That's how many times it's going to work through the data set um, and kind of try to improve each time. So you can change these numbers around a little bit. If you, if you just think like going for the moon, I'm going to do like a thousand epochs. It's going to take forever to run and then I'll get a really accurate prediction. That's not necessarily true. It's kind of uh, application dependent. Um, and you can definitely reach a point where you're kind of doing too much and it's not, it's going to confuse it more than it's going to actually help anything. Um, so after we get our training done there, we move on to getting a new quote. Um, 
And then actually, I don't know why I have this as 2015. It really doesn't need to be this long because we're only, uh, we're only pulling from this one. We're pulling the last 60. So we're just getting these last 60 values of the close price. So it's going to be from the 18th of December or 18th of June, 2022 back 60 days. And it's going to try to predict the price for the 19th, uh, and so then we're going down here. This is us doing that final prediction. So we are putting those 60 values into our X test, making it into array, doing the same reshaping we did before. And then this model.predict is where it's actually going to attempt to predict the price for the next trading day, uh, the close of the next trading day. Uh, and then we have to uh, inverse transform that price because it's going to be between 0 and 1 when it outputs it because we scaled them, the inputs. And then we will print out that predicted price and see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and run this quick. It will take a minute because it has to uh, go through all the training that we just talked about. So here we see Epoch 1 to 10. It's going through um, normally relatively quick. I have a decent computer. Uh, I also haven't even set up my... I do have a graphics card on my, on my computer. Um, I just haven't set up, gotten this library set up to uh, actually utilize that for training these. So... Um, I should do that eventually, especially once I start getting into a little bit more complex algorithms. This one, pretty simple, not a lot of epochs, just trying to give an example of how this is done. And uh, we'll see what we get at the output here. All right, and there we go. So uh, we got this 397, um, which is significantly higher than what the price is currently. Um, something I have noticed with this, I've done this a couple times with some different testing and tested for a longer time frame. What I found is that it does follow the price pretty well in terms of price movement, but um, a lot of my predictions have been significantly uh, under and over current price. It does seem to stay with the trend pretty well though. Um, so something I might recommend if you want to use this, I would probably plot uh, over a good period of days and then see how your value, like your current predicted value compares to the one it predicted for the day before. And with that, you might be able to better predict trends than actual prices themselves. Because I do not think that SPY is going to close at 397 um, come this Monday, given that it's currently at, I think, 370, maybe even less than that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basics of this uh, machine learning stuff. I'll put this up one more time. Um, really fun stuff to kind of like mess around with a little bit does get very complicated and you'll start running into some issues. If you do hit issues, if you want to replicate this, um, make sure you have these imports set up correctly. It should work pretty well and uh, go ahead and play around with it and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to be making some follow-up videos in the future, expanding on this a little bit more as I learn more about it. Um, but I hope this helped kind of explain in layman's terms how this is all working. And uh, hopefully you found this video enjoyable. If so, leave a like. I would appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.